The earliest and most primitive fish date all the way back to around half a billion years ago. However, around this time, and for many millions of years after this, they were usually at the bottom of the food chain, and most, if not all of the large predatory niches were occupied by giant ancient invertebrates. We now take it for granted that fish are some of the main big predators of the sea, but it wasn't always this way, and ancient fish would have had to have been concerned with being snagged by a claw rather than being pursued by a fast-moving predatory fish. However, this changed around 400 million years ago in the Devonian period, when there was a major shift that largely persists to this day, with fish becoming the most dominant animals in the ocean. And the specific group of fish that led the change were an unusual group of ancient fish that no longer exist, called the placoderms, that for a period of time became the most common vertebrates in the world. The earliest placoderm fossil was known from around 430 million years ago in the Silurian period. The oceans had seen many different giant predatory invertebrates up to this point, but by this time the apex predators of the sea were large sea scorpions known as the Eurypterids, and the largest sea scorpions had many species ranging from 1 to 2 meters in length. However, they were quite diverse, filling all sorts of predatory niches with some smaller sea scorpions no larger than your hand. Study of the fossil record shows that the explosion of placoderms and new fast swimming jawed fish at the beginning of the Devonian period happened almost exactly the same time that populations of sea scorpions started to dwindle, so they may have been getting outcompeted by these new fish. Adding to this, there were two subgroups of sea scorpions known as the Eurypterina that had paddles and were adapted for free swimming, and the Styleurina that lived more like crabs, feeding at the seabed and it is only the free-swimming kind that started to be driven to extinction in the early Devonian, while the Styleurina persisted on for another 100 million years after fish took over the oceans, which makes sense if the scorpions were being outcompeted, as they wouldn't have been in direct competition with these new placoderms. The largest Eurypterid of all was named Jacolopterus, that could grow to around 2.5 meters long, and was one of the last swimming sea scorpions in the ocean and so it has even been suggested that the giant sea scorpions may have evolved to get larger as they were in an arms race with placoderms. How placoderms are related to modern fish, and by extension us, is still controversial, but they were most likely a collection of different fish that diverged away from modern fish earlier in their evolution. The reason that placoderms were so successful was probably not because they were armoured, as placoderms weren't the only fish from the time that had armour, and actually, armour may have been more common on fish of this time period. Primitive fish would have been very clumsy swimmers compared to modern fish, so it may have been that selective pressures were just more likely to push them into developing heavier armour for protection, rather than becoming faster or more agile. It is likely that placoderms owe their success to innovating certain features that are seen on nearly all living fish today, like hind fins that would give them more stability in the water, but also and arguably more importantly, they were the first vertebrates to possess jaws. Jaws are the primary weapon used by nearly all predatory fish. They are so important because before this, fish had to suck up their prey, but by having a movable section around their mouth that they could use to grapple and slice, allowed them to hunt larger animals. The placoderms that replaced the Eurypterids as the ocean's main predators were called the Arthrodires. Arthrodira means jointed neck, because unlike other placoderms, the arthrodires had an opening or a joint in the back of their skull, so that when they opened their mouth and the bottom jaw moved down, this neck joint allowed the skull to move up as well, creating a larger opening, allowing them to hunt even larger prey. And this can be seen in arthrodires like Cocacetus, that was an active predator of smaller fish. This is known because they have fossils with preserved fish scales in their stomach, and at least some of these remains belong to a group of fish named the Acanthodians, that were very ancient bony fish. So the food chains of the Devonian were starting to look more like the present than ever before, but with strange twists. Arthrodires, like Cocosteus, didn't have teeth, and didn't evolve from animals with teeth either, and instead had adapted to be able to chop their prey up with a sharpened edge of their skull armour, sort of like a beak. The Arthrodires were also the first fish to evolve into large sizes, like the freshwater fish Heterosteus that could grow to about the size of a large crocodile, and had a massive mouth. 
However, it had a very flat skull and weak jaw, which led scientists into believing that it probably sieved through river and lake beds, eating small prey. By around 380 million years ago, the Arthrodires would adapt into the apex predators of the ocean, and the most famous of them was Dunkleosteus. Dunkleosteus terrelli, the largest species, could grow to well over 8 meters long, making them larger than the largest great whites on record, and most likely comparable in size to a killer whale. The huge armoured plates that made up the skull of Dunkleosteus were incredibly menacing. However, the appearance of the rest of the fish is actually largely unknown, because the different specimens and species of Dunkleosteus are all only known from parts of this frontal armoured plating. This suggests that Dunkleosteus only had armour on the front part of its body, because this would explain why this is the only part of the animal that manages to survive. Adding to this, Cocosteus is known from complete skeletons, and is only armoured on the front. One specimen of Dunkleosteus has a pectoral fin that has been preserved, and it looks like the fin of a shark. This coupled with them living in a similar way has led researchers to infer that Dunkleosteus may have had a body shape similar to a shark. Dunkleosteus's skull possessed a unique mechanism for closing and opening its jaws not seen in many other animals. Its jaw mechanism consisted of four joints that gave it a massive amount of leverage while opening and closing its mouth, meaning that Dunkleosteus could both move its jaw incredibly quickly, but also with a lot of power, possibly only being surpassed in bite force by some dinosaurs and a few giant crocodile species. And their remains have been found with semi-digested and partially eaten fish, similar to those that are regurgitated by many species of bird, reptiles and fish that swallow their prey whole so Dunkleosteus most likely crushed other large fish and creatures indiscriminately and then regurgitated any undesirable parts later. Not only were its jaws incredibly powerful, but they were also beak-shaped, as they tapered to a point that was offset with the bottom jaw, which would have centred a lot of the power of the jaw on a small point, which is what you see in animals that need to crack through armoured prey, which makes sense seeing as many of the fish that lived at the time would have been armoured, and they may have also eaten shelled invertebrates as well, like ammonites. Dunkleosteus was a giant predator even by today's standards, but even they may not have been the largest placoderm or fish in the Devonian Sea, as there were other giant arthrodires, like Titanichthys, that may have grown to around the same size as Dunkleosteus, or maybe even larger, as they are known from fewer fossils, and this would make them one of the largest animals that had ever lived up to this point. However, unlike Dunkleosteus, they didn't hunt for large prey. Study of Titanichthys' remains have shown that its jaw and skull were much weaker than other arthrodires that ate large animals, and that it may not have been able to withstand these kinds of stresses, which has led researchers to believe that it may have been a large filter-feeding animal, like a whale or a manta ray. So by the Devonian, the seas had taken on a form that was very similar to today, but with niches being filled by a very different and slightly strange group of fish that are no longer alive today. And this is because very soon after this, at the end of the Devonian, almost all of the placoderms had gone extinct, and their ecological niches were quickly occupied by other fish lineages. So the placoderms were a very bright candle, they were highly successful and diverse, but had gone extinct almost as quickly as they conquered the ocean. Thank you for watching. A massive thank you goes to all my patrons for supporting the channel, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.